Howdy folks, <clears throat> howdy folks, welcome to another beautiful Sunday afternoon out here. It's just like, I don't know, about half past six. Uh, we just came back from the movies with the kids. We went and watched Godzilla and Kong. Anyway, um, and I thought it's uh, time for a nice little impromptu braai because this morning I was going through the fridge and I found a leg of lamb, a deboned leg of lamb. So forgive what the lamb looks like. Um, it's not a real lamb chop, it's just these little slices of deboned lamb but you know still great on a braai just had been a while since i had some lamb so we're gonna have lamb nice little baked potatoes and salad today anyway let me get this on the grill and then of course for those of you that notice <laughs> in the background there i've got a fire going i'm braying on the gas grill and i've got a fire going just for the effect why do i have a fire going well, I received a whole bunch of pallets of books the other day. And um, so I had all of these big wooden pallets in the garage. And unfortunately, I can't do anything with them. If I, I want to get rid of them, I have to, um, I don't know, pay to dump them or something. So I decided to uh, just cut them all up because I've got another bunch of books arriving on Monday. So there's no space. So I decided to cut them all up and just um, use them for firewood. They work great, but I mean, it's wooden pallets from China. So I'm probably not going to stick them, my braai on there. Not going to use those coals. Although I don't know what can be wrong there. I mean, it's just like wood and at the heat of what that's running, I don't know if there's anything that can actually go wrong. But um, anyway, bottom line, I'd rather not. So we are on the gas braai and we're just enjoying the fire. It's actually getting a little bit chilly tonight. So the fire is nice, keeps it nice and hot. Anyway, so I've got, <laughs> I've got this, um, oy, 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 the lamb is falling apart. Um, yeah, deboned lamb cut into chops is not exactly ideal for a braai. But it is what it is. I mean, it's a little slim pickings. Lamb chops are damn expensive out here in Canada. Although there's some good news I heard recently. We might see more sheep farming in, uh, in the U.S. soon. Because, um, believe it or not, because of the green revolution, solar panels. <laughs> so the nice thing is, or the thing is, that solar panels are great. I mean, it's like people think, oh, you just put a solar panel up and you've got free energy for life. It doesn't work like that. Unfortunately, solar panels also has upkeep. So what needs to happen is they need to um, clean the dust off of the solar panels. There's actually huge business nowadays, um, specialized solar panel cleaners, people that come around and clean your solar panels once a year. Because um, if there's a layer of dust on your solar panel, it actually becomes less effective so um anyway that's not the story about the lamb though the thing with the lamb is they go and do these big solar farms out there in the u.s and all over the world but especially in the u.s so they go in the savannas where there's a lot of sunshine and they put all of these solar panels huge huge spaces full of solar panels but the problem is you've got vegetation, there's stuff growing, grass and whatever, and all of these things can interfere with the solar panels. Now, you don't want to run around there with a lawnmower because if you do that, <laughs> you um, create dust that falls on the solar panels. So what did they find is the perfect thing to keep the grass short around solar panels and to keep everything in check? Sheep. There's actually a whole business now in the U.S where sheep farmers rent out their sheep to these solar panel farms to, um, to mow the lawns or to mow the grass, to keep the grass short and to keep everything in check. I don't know why they don't use cows, I suppose, or cattle. I suppose the problem with the, you know, the solar panels aren't that strong. So if you have a, a cow rubbing herself against the solar panel, it might just um, damage the solar panel suppose that's the problem. Um, hmm. oh, lamb's good though. But anyway, oh. so as a little bonus for all of the sheep farmers, 
So maybe there'll be more sheep farmers. And if there's more sheep farmers, maybe we'll get more access to some lamb and good sheep. This stuff is all imported from Australia. Oh, you do get a bit of Canadian. But the bulk of it's imported from Australia. I suppose I need to train my local store. When we were up in Caulfield, the uh, Caulfield Safeway, they, um, they always had some lamb chops because I always bought the lamb chops. So I guess also they're like, oh no, lamb chops sell at this shop, so let's keep lamb chops. Of course, when we moved from there, that ended, sadly. I must say, it was a nice Safeway that, uh, is it Safeway? Yeah, it was a nice shop, shop there. I enjoyed living up there as well. Um, anyway, so not much else to tell you. I've decided to um, actually stop listening to bad news so weird. I was listening to this other person online the other day and she was saying a uh, YouTube video, she was talking about, you know, we all know that if you have a bad diet, your health is bad. It's like what you put in is what you get. If you eat uh, lots of processed foods and you eat lots of sugars and you do lots of things that you shouldn't do, you actually can feel it in your health and in your body. It's weird for me. It's like if I eat a, a big meal, early in the day as soon as i've eaten i want to fall asleep um and of course the other thing is as soon as i don't know i used to be able to eat mcdonald's but lately if i eat a mcdonald's burger i literally kind of feel sick after that i don't know why maybe it's all in the mind but anyway so i'm not a great fan of mcdonald's anyway off track again the bottom line is that um this lady was saying cody sanchez she was saying that um the same thing goes for your mind. So what you fill your mind with, just like what you fill your tummy with, has an effect on how you see and how you think, you know? And um, that actually struck me as, uh, as a true and very important point, because the reality is, it's so easy to fill our minds with crap. You know, there's like, um, and yes, okay, maybe to some people it might not seem like crap and maybe I'll take a bit of flack for it. But, you know, the, the, um, like the Israel, uh, uh, um, goodness gracious, the war in Israel and the fact that Iran has now fired missiles at Israel and now the whole world's up into oh, World War Three, World War Three. It's not going to be World War Three. People are not stupid enough to go that route. And she's like, it's just a little bit of grandstanding. They got to do it. Um, but anyway, you know, the problem is we, we read all of this crap about wars on the other side of the world and stuff that's happening around the world and people that got robbed and people that got this and we we read all of this bad news and we fill our minds with all of this bad news and it's just not i don't know i can't see it being good for us you know it actually makes us more um i almost feel like it makes us more risk averse we're scared of everything i don't seem to recall like that we were like that i look at today's kids also you know they worried about this and scared for that. I don't know, when we were kids, we weren't scared of stuff. I don't know, I got so many hidings when I was in school. I wasn't scared to cause trouble. I would just cause trouble. If I get caught, I take my, <laughs> take my hiding like a man and I move forward. Um, I mean, I got a lot of hidings in school. I was a naughty boy, but um, that's not the point. The reality is that I, don't, I can't remember us being so scared of everything. We used to take a lot of chances, stupid chances, oftentimes. And I guess, you know, some people we know didn't make it through, but um, you've got to take risks. Life is about risks. If you don't take any risk, where do you draw the line? Mm -hmm. Nice lamb chop. Where do you draw the line, you know? I mean, if you're so risk averse that you don't want to take any risks, you can go as far as say, well, in that case, you shouldn't get in the car and you shouldn't drive because it's risky to drive, you know. You shouldn't 
fly because it's risky to fly. You shouldn't swim because it's risky to swim, you know. And I mean, you can take it all the way back to where you literally should just sit in a little metal box at your house because that's the least risky. But then again, you know, risky that you're going to lose your mind, I suppose. So I think what I'm trying to say is that you got to take some risks. And you shouldn't be stupid, but you should also not like over worry about risks. You should take risks. There was a st statement or a... Um, what was it? They came out with a study recently that said millennials and Gen Z, they take about, I don't know, was it 26 or 36% less risk than Gen X and the generations before them. Um, and because they take less risks, they, they less, they're more risk averse, they don't want to take risks, they also <clears throat> are poorer and they suffer more because they don't go out and create businesses. They don't leave their job if they don't like it. They don't, they, 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 they are risk averse. They don't take risks. And unfortunately in business, you've got to take risks if you want to be successful. I mean, you're not going <laughs> to, you're not going to get anything done if you don't take any risks. Try, ask any businessman. So, um, yeah, that was actually quite interesting. People don't want to take risks anymore. I suppose it's our fault. It's like I, Belinda said to me also, and I told her that. She's like, yeah, it's our fault because we've been teaching our kids, <clears throat> don't do that, that might happen. Don't do that, that might happen. It's all these things about, don't do that, that's too risky. Don't do that, that's too risky. Stay away from that, it's too risky. It's just, um, it's just a continuous thing, eh? So I think... Um, Belinda is totally correct. It's also all our own fault as parents. And I get it. I mean, we try and protect our kids, I suppose. But at the same time, we also need to let them know that risk isn't entirely a bad thing, I suppose. Anyway, I got a pile of this... Um, <laughs> I got a pile of this uh, cut-up wooden pallets over here. So I can sit and eat my lamb chops next to this beautiful fire and look at the sunset. It's lacquer these days. The sun only sets at around 7, 8 o'clock. Well, so I think it's by now. It's just after 8 at night. So that's quite cool. All right. I think this lamb is almost perfectly done now. Just a quick one on the grill. Ah, maybe a little bit more. I need to do a proper clean of the little gas nozzles again because it's almost like it's um, it's almost like it's uh, some of them are be getting clogged. Oh, this price worked. This little gas grills worked. <laughs> we use it often. I must say, it's actually quite handy. Really, really nice. All right, folks. Well, I'm going to sign off. I think these are ready. I'm going to go inside, grab the plate, and then uh, we are going to have our dinner. You all must have a beautiful day. Stay healthy. Stay brying. Cheers.